M82 2.0 power supply replacement. So yeah, one more video about the M82. Of course, you've seen the video where we did the ASIC replacement and the M82 tried to commit suicide twice because of this, you know, 25, 30 year old power supply. We just gave it up. Here is the fuse that popped. I don't know if I really got a close up of that, but you can definitely tell just by looking at it, it's all blown and right there was the cap. But um, we also figured out that this only supplies five volts to the M82 and it is a six amp peak. All the numbers are right here. And then um, of course I wanted a new one to put in here. And I looked on Mauser and uh, immediately found one for like nine dollars. And it, I think it was a three amp, but it was open like this where you can just stick your finger in and stuff. And I was like, well, I might as well up the ante a little bit here and get an enclosed one. And I also tried to get closer to the six amps and I found one, I think it was just under $35, and it's enclosed, and it is 5 volt only, and it is 5 amp, or uh, yeah, 5 volt, 5 amp, so it's a 25 watt power supply. But the big shocker was the sheer size difference. This thing is a full third of the, <laughs> third of the size of the original, and almost half as tall as the tallest component, as the tallest cap on here. So I was, I was shocked. I was like, that's a 25 watt power supply? Crazy. But I'm definitely willing to give it a shot. Uh, make the M82 last a lot longer than this was going to let it anyway. Even if we did replace everything on there, which I just wasn't going to do. So the next big thing is to uh, get this mounted somehow. It's got a couple mounting holes. But it didn't come with any hardware. I was kind of disappointed with that. And for the wiring harness, those things, what I thought about doing to convert from this to this was taking off the connectors off the old power supply and mounting those to some perf board and wiring it all together and then somehow mounting that to these screw terminals. So we've got our our line voltage, neutral, ground, and then our minus volts, plus volts, which we won't be using minus volts, just ground. So, let's see what happens. So this is how the old power supply looked when it was in there. And this is how much room the new one takes. I literally could have left the old one in there and just mounted the supply like off to the side somewhere. There's so much room for this, it's crazy. Hmm. There's not really a huge reason to use the existing mount post. I could go so far as to make a plate screw down to that and then have this mounted to the plate I don't think anybody's gonna cry about a couple extra little holes in the aluminum so I might just make a couple little holes right there stick that on there one way or another maybe this way so that you can have access to the screws once the cover is off a little easier. Although, that's solid right there. It would be nice to have it either like that or that. Probably flat would be preferable. I actually don't see I was gonna say I don't see any heat sink, but it looks like I see a transistor, maybe something back over here that's actually mounted right to that plate, which that's solid all the way around down to here. So as long as as long as those are mounted to metal, 
it should it should uh, cool sufficiently. That would kind of give me room for my wire harness adapter. Hmm. I need to adapt that one too. Which is that big one. And that's just the spade terminal. I wouldn't feel too bad about cutting that off. can see one possible reason to not mount it like this and that's so you can actually see in there and see the the uh, what was it a 56 microfarad 400 volt cap right there it's kind of hard to see in the camera but in order to inspect the uh, top or events if it goes bad you would want it laying down. So that kind of narrows it down for me to mount it somewhere in there like that. Alright, so I have gotten the new power supply mounted. It's just two screws on the bottom. Come out really well. And I keep mulling over this whole uh, connector issue. I really don't want to destroy these in any way just to get my new one connected. So what I'm going to do, this one was easy, this is the um, 110 volt mains supply to the DC power supply. I, I've gotten uh, new spade connectors for that and I think what I'm going to do is leave the original connectors out of it, put those with the original power supply for the new for the new owner. <clears throat> and I found a bunch of um, let's see, this red is looks like it's 16 gauge, and the black and white. but it looks like it's better inside. I don't know, but this was definitely power supply. These wires came from one of them um, rear projection TVs that I took apart on my other channels. I'm on my other channel. So I know they're definitely good enough for this. And then I'll also reuse some of that black wire for uh, ground. And I guess I do need to come up with a green wire for that one. And another spade terminal. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder these directly to the bottom of the connector that this plugged into. So that will be a hard soldered mod. However, it's just going to be a wire soldered to a couple posts. So it would be really really easy to remove them if whoever decides to make this as original as possible but no, I think it's coming along anyway we'll get a little further down the road here I took the main board back out to solder in the wires for the 5 volt supply onto the bottom of the board should be fairly easy to remove if anybody wants to take it back to more stock looking Alright, so I'm mostly wired in. I don't have 5 volts going to the board yet. I have my mains and earth hooked up. And there's an adjustment screw over here, so what I want to do is check the voltage output here and adjust it in. I'll do that off camera so I can buzz through this. Okay, it's kind of sensitive, but whatever. I've got it at uh, 5.022 volts, and I think I'm just going to leave it there and hook up these wires and then turn it on, make sure it still works. Well I noticed something when I was uh, 
getting the voltage set right that was using V plus and V minus. However, right now, the uh, frame is shorted to the earth main, which is probably uh, connected to the power supply cage, case, frame, whatever. And I don't believe I need, I want to have that touching the uh, DC ground or whatever you want to call it on the main board. I believe this needs to be separated from the frame, but I definitely want to make sure. Unfortunately, yes, I had to ugly it up quite a bit. Um, after looking at the original power supply and testing continuity and everything, the earth ground definitely did not um, have continuity to frame and all that. If you remember, it had the isolating pads underneath of it and everything. Only one of the posts and the four mount screws actually had continuity and it was on um, V negative or motherboard ground, whatever you want to call it. So I'm pretty sure this way it'll be fine and um, I've got it all wired up now so I guess really the only thing left to do is to power it on here and see if it still works. Okay so I have a power pack in and I have composite hooked up on the back so I think we are good to go here. Beautiful. And according to the ASIC, it should take a while to get from slot one over power pack. I kind of forgot about that, so I want to go ahead and move it over here. Slot one. And we'll hook up a controller, play with it for a while. Cool. Well, I'm going to let this run probably for a few hours. Uh, wow, my world may not work. Uh, looks like a uh, Say Abidox probably won't work either. Let's see, duck hunt should work, right? Yep. I think uh, YY must be one of those IRQ games. Well, actually, a more fun test might might be to load it up with 12 carts and just let it cycle through its uh, attract mode. I think that would be a lot more fun actually. This should be quite a, an array of different games here but um, I'm going to let it go for a while. No, no reason to videotape this really. Just make sure it goes through a couple times and then I'll let it run for a few hours just make sure the power supply is going to handle it and then um, then I'll get back to the RGB mod actually and then finish that up and then I should be ready to actually sell this thing. Well it's been running for quite a while now. I think close to three hours or whatever so I believe the power supply situation is finally under control and should last quite a bit longer than the original was ever going to.